Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Gedling series. This is a small district to the east of Nottingham and it only has 12 of them. Mind you, it's got some belters. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Gedling, everybody. There's an ambulance coming past. Oh, he's turned his siren off now, so you can actually hear me. He's going at a fair lick. Must be some kind of emergency. Anyway, anyway, he's uh, racing through this beautiful little village here in Gedling, and one which I've already been told you have to be careful where you park. I've parked in the pub car park. As you can see here, this is the pub car park. The pub is literally just across here. And this is perfectly legal, apparently, according to the guy who lives in the cottage next door. So I'm all good. My only other options would be on private roads or on the main road, which is not a good idea. Anyway, this is the beautiful Linby. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. I hope you're ready for this one, folks. This is perhaps the best village I've ever covered, and that's saying something. Welcome to the tiny Linby, situated between Papplewick and the town of Hucknall on the B6011, north of Nottingham. Much like Papplewick, it's located in the Hidden Valleys area of Nottinghamshire, and the word hidden is the perfect way to describe just how much of Linby's history isn't obvious. If you blink as you drive through this one, you almost certainly miss it, but you wouldn't realise just how much you're missing. Limby is, quite simply, one of the prettiest and most historic villages in the country. Its name is derived from the nearby River Lean, which itself derives from a Celtic word meaning lake or pool. It grew thanks to the river and the mills which lined its length. Later industry here included Limby Colliery, which was recognised as Britain's champion pit in the 1960s. Limby also had several railway lines at one time as well. Today, only one remains. Interestingly, there's not just one, but two village crosses, which stand either end of its main street, alongside which there are two streams with a cracking story to tell from wartime. And all this history is complemented by a beautiful backdrop of gorgeous old houses and farms, and several well-kept floral displays. There's no wonder Linby won Nottinghamshire's Best Kept Village Award in 2013. Shall we go and see it? I reckon we should. Our start point is outside a lovely row of cottages on Main Street. Remember Robinson's Mill or Castle Mill from the Papplewick episode? These cottages were built for mill workers. In fact, most of Limby's historic village centre grew thanks to the mills on the River Lean. It hasn't really changed much since the 1700s. Let's explore Quarry Lane, which is a reference to Limby's quarries, which provided stone for local houses and for Newstead Abbey too. It's the location of both the Sherwood House Care Home and Linby Cum Papplewick Church of England Primary School, which provides schooling for approximately 120 pupils from both villages. This is not the only school the village has ever had. If you turn around, you can see the former Victorian school building, which is now owned by the Nottinghamshire Girl Guides Association. Named Hanson House, it lies on the junction of Quarry Lane and Main Street and bears a date stone of 1872. The building also has a maypole in its grounds. 
So I will just make it clear, if you actually wanted to access the school with your vehicle, you go a bit further than what I walked, and the entrance is on the right-hand side as the road turns into like a, a gravel slash dirt track type thing. Um, there's a cricket pitch up there as well, I believe. So now I've come back down Quarry Lane, and our next thing to talk about is this. It's a cross. Now we're used to seeing crosses, but Limby is quite unique because it doesn't just have one, it has two. This is what's known as the bottom cross. We'll see the top cross in a bit. So now we're going to walk between the two crosses on Main Street. This, the bottom cross, is the younger of the two and it's inscribed with the date 1663. It's believed to have been dedicated to the restoration of King Charles II to the throne. For the first time in Gedling we've found a phone box and this one's a book exchange. There are some pretty interesting buildings along here. Take this one for example which used to be Limby's post office. There's now no longer one of those here. There is, however, a bus shelter. In much the same way as Papplewick, Limby is on the route of the 141 between Sutton in Ashfield and Nottingham. Keeping a watching brief over all of this is the Horse and Groom, Limby's pub. It's a 17th century inn which brewed its own beer on site until 1921. More information can be found on what pub. Eventually we arrive at the Top Cross, a Grade II listed structure. This one dates back to the 14th century and was restored in the late 19th. Okay, so here we are then at the Top Cross, which is where we need to be turning left here down Church Lane because we're going to make for the church here in Limby. There's the Top Cross for you, just so you can see it a little bit better. It wasn't very clear in that last shot, was it? So let's head for the church next. Limby's church is dedicated to St Michael and it's a Grade 2 listed building. It contains a number of features which date back to the 13th century. The building probably goes back a little further to the 12th century and even then it's thought to stand on the site of an older building. This church has some rather sobering history relating to children who came to Papplewick and Limby from workhouses in London to work in the mills on the River Lean. We spoke about them last week. Many of them died when they were here, and they were buried in this very churchyard in unmarked graves. St Michael's Church has been extended and altered several times, including restorations in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. You can even see where some alterations have been made, like here for example. Was this maybe a former entrance? Restoration of its bells was completed in 1998 in memory of Evelyn Grey and her family. The church is still very much in use and is ecclesiastically joined with St James's in Papplewick. Okay, so around the back of the church you've got a football pitch. This is Linby Colliery Welfare Football Club. Although it looks like it's undergoing some kind of um, renovation at the moment, maybe relaying the pitch. I can see a goal, but I can't see an actual pitch. Um, there's like boards in the way, so it's probably um being relayed for the new season who knows who knows so limby colliery welfare that tells us something doesn't it it tells us that limby once had a colliery and it certainly did we're going to go and find the colliery memorial now On Waterloo Road you come to a winding wheel which marks the site of Limby Colliery which was in operation between 1873 and 1988. In 1963 Limby was regarded as Britain's champion pit. It was the most efficient in Europe and in 1963 it achieved a peak output of 1,325,675 tonnes of coal thanks to 1,113 men. Production remained at more than a million tonnes well into the 1970s. Now, seeing as we've just seen Limby Colliery's football club, here's a football-related fact for you. In 1950, Limby were the last club in the Hucknall area to reach the first round proper of the FA Cup when they hosted Gillingham in front of a record crowd of 6,585. Now we're making our way to Wig Hay Road, which is the main road out of Limby towards the town of Hucknall. We can do that by using a handy shortcut. It brings us to Limby Level Crossing. The average visitor to Limby might be unaware of its railway history. There was much more than just this one line. 
Okay, so we've got a level crossing here. There's a railway line which crosses Limby Parish. There it is. It's just a single track and a very simple level crossing with automatic barriers. Now, historically, Limby had more than one railway line. In fact, it had three. One of them crossed the other two. Let's talk a bit about the railways here in Limby. Yes indeed, Limby once had three railway lines. They were the Great Northern Railway, the Great Central Railway and the Midland Railway, which is now the only one that remains. This here is the Limby Trail, which was the route of the Great Northern Railway, more specifically the stretch between Nottingham and Mansfield. It's now been turned into a cycleway. The Great Central Railway crossed both of the other lines, literally just to the north of where we are here. It was the last main line ever built from the north of England to London. So, did Linby have any stations? Yes, it did. In fact, it had two, and you don't need to go very far to find some evidence of them. This is Linby Heritage Centre, which used to be the Weybridge office at Linby Station on the Great Northern Railway. The other station was on the Midland Railway. This is open on Sundays during the summer. Before the 1990s, the site it occupies was rented out to a local man who repaired cars, and was known to the locals as Bagnall's Yard. And the Heritage Centre also includes a Garden of Reflection and this, which is the Linby Wildflower Meadow. Doesn't this look quite pretty? I like wildflower meadows. They encourage wildlife. There should be more of them. Absolutely there should. Okay, so we are done with all the railway related stuff and really from here all I've got to do is walk back to the pub car park and complete the route. However, I have saved probably the best thing about Limby until last. This is the story of Limby Docks. Either side of Main Street are two streams known as Limby Docks. Despite the name, they've never been part of any kind of shipping system like a canal or otherwise. They were probably once used to contain water for driving the water mills. Their name though would confuse the Germans during World War II. They appeared on German Air Force maps, leading them to believe, incorrectly, that they were shipping docks. As a result, they tried to bomb them. Sure enough, Limby was bombed, but if the docks were ever really the target, the raid was a complete failure, as the devices they dropped fell on a nearby field instead. Having survived the threat of destruction from the air, the docks have recently undergone some restoration with financial assistance from the Heritage Lottery Fund. How about that for a story? One final thing as we finish the route, Brook Farm, which sits next to the horse and groom. It's a horticultural training centre and a farm shop. So who would have thought that two small streams in rural Nottinghamshire were so interesting to Nazi Germany that they had to try and bomb them. Thankfully, they failed and they're still in one piece today. I've got one last thing to do here in Limby and that's put one of these cards on the notice board, which is in this bus shelter next to the horse and groom. And Limby is officially completed.
Believe it or not, this tiny place has more. Today's special section is a mishmash of other facts and local legends, and you can read all about these on a board near the old post office. One of them is about the humble pancake. They're believed to have been invented in Limby because it's known that flat cakes were baked here to honour the brave women of the village who killed Danish invaders after their husbands fled. Another relates to a ghost called spring Jack, who's said to have once left giant footprints in the snow on Quarry Lane. Weir Mill, one of the cotton mills on the Lean, is supposedly haunted too by a woman named Sophia Hyatt. She was obsessed by Lord Byron and was killed by a coach at the entrance to the grounds of Newstead Abbey. The top cross once had an administrative purpose. Medieval courts were once held at it for minor offences. And lastly, during World War II, a house called Linwood was once used as a shelter for the blind who came from Sheffield. What a lovely place Limby is. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this walk. It took me almost exactly one hour, but I'd have happily stayed longer. Limby is fabulous, and it doesn't take much imagination to realise why people love it so much. Two down, ten to go in Gedling, and hopefully they're all like Limby. I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.